Hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching for take we reviewed the almost all the custom roms released for the nothing phone one but still few roms review are pending one of them is extended xt we already made the review video of extended xt for all the devices featuring oneplus 9rt but we didn't done the device specific review of that extended xt 5.0 for nothing phone one which is for officially available I was using the Pixis OS on my phone so today we are going to flash the extended XT today I will show you the flashing of this build we will do the complete testing of what's working including the camera and the glyph light to confirm is it daily driver build or not I did the full CPU performance and stability in comparison with the other ROMs and finally I shown some minor bugs with my final verdict so what the video till the end if you are coming from the nothing os or any other custom rom then your bootloader must be unlocked you need pc ready with all the latest fast boot and adb driver installed download the rom zip file boot and vendor boot given under the video description place them in a platform tools or the desktop of your pc where all the fast boot drivers are working now power up the device and long press the volume down plus power button to boot your device in a fast boot mode and then connect it to the pc now with the further do let's get started it's a new in the folder where you placed all the files open the powershell window by pressing shift key of keyboard plus right click of your mouse select open powershell window here from the drop down menu in the same way type fastboot devices then type fastboot flash boot and drag the boot image file in the cmd and hit enter later type fastboot flash vendor underscore boot and drag the vendor boot file in the cmd once all flashing gets done on the phone using volume keys select recovery and press the power button this will boot your device in a recovery now in the recovery tap apply update then tap apply update from adb now in the same cmd type adb side load and drag the rom zip file and at the 47% you may see flashing got stuck but actually it's okay don't worry after 5 to 10 minutes you will see flashing is successful with the 1x for notification now in a recovery tab factory set then tap wipe data and reboot the system so phone started to boot into the extended xt boot animation which looks cool rom comes with the extended launcher we didn't get the pixel launcher here let's jump to the bot phone to check the details of new rom this is the Android 13 based ROM with the same Android 13 Easter egg. Extended XT version is 5.0. Maintainer of this ROM is Mukesh. Android security patch of 5th February 2023. It is too old because this build is from 19th February 2023. Kernel version is 5.4.231. Kernel is enforcing. Now let's check out the major functions that are important to use this ROM as a daily driver. First one is the Wafa and Wafa hotspot. Both are working. Bluetooth devices are connecting with all the working HD audio codecs like AAC, LDAC, APTX, etc. Both the NFC and GPS location is working without any issues. Adapter brightness is working with the good accuracy. Fingerprint and the face unlock both are working with the good accuracy and they are blazing fast. Both the 4G and 5G networks with the VOLT calling are working. Wi-Fi calling is also available and working. There are no any calling issues in this ROM. Call recording function is available in a dialer and recorded calls will be found under the recording folder in the file manager. Hey Google voice activation is working for the both the screen on and off mode. Let's check out the signature feature of nothing phone one that is glyph light. Under the glyph setting who gets the glyph light brightness slider flip to glyph is available and is working well but sometime it working weird. Well. Notification glyph light is working. It has this notification blinking similar to the incoming notifications. We didn't get any other nothing phone one glyph notification lights. Battery indicator is working but it doesn't show the progress of battery charging when you tries to move the phone when it's in a charging mode. All the sensors like the accelerometer, light sensor, proximity, magnetometer, compass, gyroscope, ear proximity, microphone all are working fine. 
now let's check out the camera rom has the nothing was camera implemented it has working photo mode portrait mode so working for the both the selfie and main camera sadly the biggest bug is for the video shooting video shooting has the 180p 720 4k resolution with the hdr mode but 4k with the 60fps is not available video stabilization is available but nothing is useful because you can't able to shoot the video in this application it causing the freezing of camera while taking the video shoot and it automatically stops after some times all the ultra wide angle camera modes are working slow motion and time lapse both are not working glyph light flash setting is available but it's not working under the most setting you get the time lapse but it also not working but other features like the panorama mode macro mode and expert mode all are working fine i also tried the google gcam mgc build but it also has the same camera bug so camera section needs the big improvement to make it usable next important part is the safety net rom is passing the asnet safety net check so you can use all the banking and security applications on this rom device storage is encrypted so your data is safe if your pin locked device got stolen now it's time for the performance testing rom runs on the adapt to 120 hertz setting if it didn't enable the force 120 hertz it goes to the 60 hertz when the screen is not in use and rises to the 120 hertz immediately when you touch the screen there is no any force 120 hertz setting available under the developer setting but who gets the dedicated screen refresh rate setting under the display if you enable the 120 hertz screen stays at 120 hertz all the time but for some applications like the camera and youtube video playback it goes down to the 60 hertz performance of rom is buttery smooth everything is just gliding on the fingertips apps opening closing scrolling switching between the applications ram management all things are just smooth there is no any jitter you will feel for the day to day activities now let's check out the cpu and the gpu performance using the geekbench 6 in the first test for the cpu performance i got the score of 930 and 2473 for the single and multi core respectively both these scores are good but not high till the date i got the highest results for the paranoid android rom only only evolution x has the similar results like the extended xt it means that highly customizable roms has slightly lower performance as compared to the pure osp roms after running the test for the OpenGL graphics API, I got the score of 1807, while for the Vulkan graphics API, I got the score of 2344. Both these scores are almost same as compared with the other custom ROMs. Overall, though the Geekbench numerical scores are low for this ROM, but you will not feel any kind of lag in day-to-day -day uses. Now it's time to test the CPU throttling performance. I ran the test for the 5 minutes on the 20 threads. Before running the test, CPU temperature was normal, it's ranging between 42 to 45 degrees Celsius. After running the test, I didn't see any kind of red or yellow lines in the throttling graph, while the test runs smoothly. After stopping the test, I got the score of 93%, which is very good score. We already seen same result for the OnePlus 9RT CPU throttling test. The current score is high score as compared to the any other Android 13 based custom ROM for nothing phone 1, which I tested previously. Temperature after test range between 45 to 55 degrees Celsius, which is normal after doing such intensive task. So this ROM has capability to handle the CPU intensive task. Now if you ask about the customization, so this ROM is highly customizable ROM with the some outstanding gaming tunables. Who gets all the custom features available under the extensions tab under the main setting of the device. I already thoroughly discussed all the customizations in the old video. If you want to check them, then please check the iCard video or the video link given under the video description. Now comes the most important part. What are the bugs? The most common bug of Wideband Security L3 is still persisting here. So we can't able to stream the Netflix and the Amazon Prime at the full HD resolution. All the camera bugs were already seen under the camera timeline of the video. Except this, I did not found anything deal breaking for users. So what is my final verdict? If you think the camera is important for you, then please keep this update and wait for new one. But if you prefer your device for gaming, then this ROM has amazing performance with the lots of tunables for the gaming under the miscellaneous setting, which help you to improve your gaming a lot. But still, this ROM is on the old sources, it will need time to get more refined updates.
hope you guys liked my work then please do like and share this video subscribe our channel press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content thanks for watching see you next time take care bye bye